Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm a nursing student at ACC in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, today we're going to talk about general anesthetics, uh, general anesthesia for a mother when she's giving birth postpartum lecture. Um, I'm doing this video because there's lots of ways that I learned and one of the ways I learned is with my whiteboard and talking stuff out and doing my research beforehand and listening to lectures over and over again. Um, so I'm going to start. So why would a doctor say we have to put this mother under? Okay, there are a few reasons. The first reason is clotting disorders. The second reason would be your regional anesthetic is not working. That includes your epidural and your spinal blocks. Okay. The third reason would be if she has some type of spinal injury where you can't even deliver, you can't even deliver an epidural or a spinal block. Another reason would be it's an emergency. We got to do a C-section now. It's the longer we wait, the more harm is going to be on the mom and the baby. Okay. Um, now, when we, let me put this down. Or another one would be, well, I'm going to put emergency down. Another one would be if she's had surgery on her back. Okay. If she's had surgery and is risking or compromising the mom and the baby, the doctor's going to give her a general anesthetic. Okay. So when we're doing our assessment, we're going to have to tell her the side effects. Okay. Before we give consent, we have to make sure that she understands what's going to happen, what we're going to do as nurses and then the side effects to the baby and the side effects to her afterwards and how she's going to feel um, and things we're going to do which I'm going to list in our interventions too okay so breastfeeding a majority of moms breastfeed after birth okay but with general anesthetics it's going to be really slow postpartum, okay? She's not going to be able to breastfeed as fast as she would like. So when she wakes up, tell her that she's not going to be able to breastfeed um, because the nerve endings and the sensation may not be there, okay? Now, what's going to happen to the baby? Let's talk about fetal effects, okay? So, fetal effects. Okay, so keep in mind that the general anesthetic reaches the baby in two minutes, okay? So really quick. So what's going to happen to the baby is that the baby's going to have a low APGAR score. And fetal depression. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that the mom knows that. What's going to happen to the mother? Up here. Now, general anesthetics slows. Excuse me. General anesthetic slows everything down. Okay, and. What's going to happen usually is that the mom is able to, with a normal with a normal labor and delivery, um, the uterus after you give birth, it usually will involute. And involute is a term used to go back to pre-pregnancy state because the mom is under general anesthetics. She's not going to go back to uh, her uterus is going to have a 
really hard time going back to the way it was. So the uterine relaxation is going to be really slow. So make sure she knows that. So let's write this down. Okay. And because of this if the uterus does not go back down or involute like it is supposed to, uh, especially if they put the woman under, they uh, they take the baby out, and the body's not doing what it does naturally, they're going to have to take the placenta out. So the mom's going to have this big gashing hole that will usually contract by itself naturally, but now it's not. So that's going to make her at risk of bleeding. It's going to be really bad. Okay. And another thing that the mom is going to be at risk for is vomiting and aspiration. Okay. So you're going to have to let her know that before she goes under. In our nursing interventions, there's things that we can do to help aid the mom when she's vomiting and, and she's aspirating and stuff like that. Because when it gets into her lungs, it's going to create a bigger problem than what we wanted it to be. Okay. Now, let's get into what we're going to do as nurses to help prevent some of these problems. Because our job is very really important. So, let's write our nursing intervention. The first thing we're going to do, assess, educate, all those things that we're going to do that we would do um, anyway, we're going to do. But the main things that we're going to do for this woman, for the pregnant woman, we're going to give an 18 gauge IV started. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to get Victrum, Victrum and Reglam. Okay. Big Trump and Reglan, Big Trump aids with your kidney because everything slowed down. So uh, Big Trump aids your kidneys from not uh, building up as much uric acid. So I'm going to put a little kidney right there for you. And Reglan helps your stomach. There we go. So Big Trump helps your kidney. Free gland helps your stomach. All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, because we already know that this causes a drop in O2 for the baby and the mom, we're going to make sure she has a wedge underneath her hip. Why? Because that wedge underneath the hip helps oxygen be delivered to the baby. Okay. Because when someone's in general anesthetic, when a pregnant woman in particular is under general anesthetic, She's on her back, okay? So that baby is putting all this pressure on her uh, abdominal aorta, okay? But if we put a hip, a little pillow to turn her up to place the baby more so on the side, that won't happen, okay? And another thing that we're going to do, too, is assist the anesthesiologist, okay? And we're going to assist with the placement of the endotracheal tube, okay? Okay. Now, when she, before we give this to her, we're also going to tell her, too, that you're going to have a difficulty uh, bringing that trach in there, okay? Because with pregnant women, unlike regular people, when you, like, if you were to look in my throat, for example, I'm not pregnant. Um, you would see the lining of my trachea, and it's like two like uh, very clear uh, I don't know what you call it, but you can see it really clear as day, okay? So the doctor, let's say if I need to be put under, he can see it and just do it himself. 
but with pregnant women, everything's swollen. It is very edematous, okay? So the nurse is going to have to help the doctor. No, sorry. The anesthesiologist and the doctor. So you're going to have to help them put pressure on your crib cord right there to help them see it, to, like, get it down there, okay? Because you don't want a mom to um, stop breathing because... Not stop breathing, I'm sorry. Because the, the purpose of, let's go back. Okay, so the purpose of an endotracheal tube is to aid in breathing. Because the general anesthetic prevents uh, and decreases, not prevents, decreases the respirations that would normally happen in pregnancy to really, really low. So she's going to be placed on a ventilator to help assist her with breathing. Okay. So that's why we need to help the anesthesiologist put in the endotracheal tube. Um, and that's it for general anesthesia. See ya.